Hey everyone, Michael Park here for CreativeCow.net. Now a while ago, somebody asked on the Trapcode forum how to create a photorealistic waterfall or something very close. And in my attempt to help them out, I created this little composition and put it up on the, the CreativeCow.net site to be downloaded. And it looks like a bunch of you guys took that opportunity since it's been downloaded almost a hundred times now. Uh, recently, another poster asked if somebody could help them out creating the waterfall because they didn't have CS4 and the project file was CS4. Instead of going through and redoing this in CS3, I thought I'd just make this short video tutorial showing exactly how I did it and why I did it. And uh, hopefully, you know, that will help you guys uh, figure out how to do this yourselves. Uh, the old adage, you know, teach a person to fish, you feed them for a lifetime, give a person a fish, you only feed them for a day. So with that in mind, I'm just going to go through and uh, take a shot at recreating this. Now, I haven't looked at this project in a while, and I'm just going to do this straight without, you know, any editing. So if I screw up, you're going to see the screw up, no big deal. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. I'm just going to delete out all this stuff and start with a clean, start with a clean composition. First thing I want to do is create the, uh, I guess, the final comp that we're going to be putting this in. So I'm just going to call this final comp. I think the original composition was, was smaller in size, but I'll be using 1280 by 720. 10 seconds is fine. 25 frames per second looks good. And say OK. Let's also import our background dam image. So I'm going to double click, and this will be provided in the uh, project file that's linked to this tutorial. Click Open and drag and drop that in and let's just position this so you can kind of see things a little better maybe scale it down just a bit there that looks pretty good zoom this in just a bit okay next thing we need to do is create a new composition to be the source for our kind of our bar of waterfall here so choose composition new composition and this one let's go ahead and make this 500 wide by 30 so long and narrow 25 frames per second is fine duration of 10 is fine let's call this waterfall source and choose OK now we need a new solid layer new solid or control Y we'll call this source and it doesn't matter what color but I always like to kind of color coordinate this and choose OK. Now let's go up to the effects and choose effect. Uh, let's see here. Noise and grain. Turbulent noise. Ch keep the fractal type as basic and soft linear is fine. We need to change the contrast to 150 and the brightness will put to 2. The complexity will drop down to 2 and we need to bring the scale down so tr bring the transform and scale this down maybe even a little more that's too much there we go that looks good and we need to mess with the evolution settings here so let's uh, do a quick expression alt click the stopwatch and let's type time times 720 to make it kind of go quickly here. Let's do a quick RAM preview. And as you can see, it kind of moves rather quickly. And what we're doing here is I'm creating some dark spots and some lighter spots. So it's going to be mostly white with a few dark blues thrown in to kind of give you that look as the waterfall is cascading, that there's some dark patches and then some frothy patches as well. I think I want to scale this up just a bit, so well, let's go to 30 and see how that looks. Okay. Um, next thing we need to do is recolor this, so choose Effect, Color Correction, Colorama, and let's get a little more space to work here. Let's change the output cycle to Solarize Blue, and let's change some of these settings. Change the blue here to really a white and let's change this black to kind of a uh, middle blue blue greenish color uh, maybe just a hair darker there we go and let's do another quick RAM preview I think there's too much blue 
So I don't want to, I want it to be more white than blue. So let's click here and create another point. And let's drag this to here. This over. And let's do another quick grant preview, see how that looks. I think that's better. We can always come back and change this if, if that becomes necessary, but it uh, looks good for now. Uh, let's go back to our final comp, and we'll drag the waterfall source in. Make sure you make it a 3D layer. Let's go ahead and put a new camera in here. So layer new camera. Uh, let's use a 35 millimeter preset. Choose OK. And let's create a new null, layer new, null object. Make this 3D, and we'll rename this uh, camera uh, rotate. Let's link the camera, or parent it, to the camera rotate. And we'll be using this to move the camera around, um, to position it, because obviously this isn't straight. And instead of positioning the source in 3D space, since we are going to be using particular, and XYZ does matter in particular, and orientation does, we'll use the camera to rotate it into position, the right aspect ratio and everything else, um, as opposed to rotating the layer itself. Let's, all right. So let's go ahead and, uh, sorry about that, the uh, cell phone rings and sometimes you got to take them. Um, where were we? Oh yeah, we're in the middle of explaining where we're going to put this source thing and we got the camera rotation up. Let's uh, let's go ahead and rotate this so it's facing up because I kind of want this to kind of face out and cascade down. So hit the R to bring up the rotation on this layer. And instead of messing with the rotation, I'm just going to you know, change the orientation. I'm going to change it to 290. So it's kind of, we'll shoot everything up like it's coming up and over and down. Um, now let's grab the camera rotate tool and actually camera whoops I did not mean to do that there we go I meant to give us some more space and let's change the uh, actually all that looks good let's change the rotation here see the Y rotation a bit and the Z rotation a bit and let's bring the water source scale up a bit and we'll drag it up and over so it kinda looks like it's on the wall here and now we can hide it and I'll give us some more room to look here and the next thing we need to do is create our solid layer on which to put particular so from the menu choose layer new solid or hit control Y and we'll call this whoops particular and make sure it's comp size and choose OK um, now into the con uh, controls for particular ah, we didn't put the effect on yet <laughs> choose effect trap code particular I know you can't see it but I did it trust me so standard you know emitter for particular uh, scroll down the emitter and change the particles well let's leave those at 100 right now change the emitter type to layer and go down here to the layer emitter and let's change this from none to uh, waterfall source and current time RGB particle color looks good and let's change the uh, direction from uniform to directional now you can see all the particles are kind of going up and we need the directional spread to change from 20 to 10 the X rotation we're going to uh, modify that a little bit and change that kind of so it comes forward a little bit 23 looks good the velocity leave it at 100 random at 20 all that looks fine change the Z to probably 20 to make them group a little bit closer and let's go down to the physics and increase the gravity deck on it increase the gravity from 0 to about 200 and so you look through this you know everything's kind of dropping looks good and accelerating downward nothing too exciting yet because the particle count is way down but we can change that 
Uh, let's adjust a couple other things here while we're at it before we jack up the particles. Change the uh, particle life from 3 to 1.6 and make sure that that gets down to the bottom. It cuts off a little bit so let's go maybe 2 and now all the particles at least hit the bottom here. That looks good. Let's change the size from uh, 5 to maybe 4 and everything else looks good. Rendering let's turn on motion blur 360 looks good, linear is fine and as you can see as the particles, particles get faster they start stretching out. Now we need to change the particles per second from 100 to 80,000. I know that's a lot but we need to really fill in this. So after the computer chews on it and starts smoking a little bit uh, you can see that you've got your streaks here. Um, Let's just do a quick preview of what this looks like. I'm just going to bring the timeline in here a little bit just to give us, you know, a couple seconds. And I'm going to pause this while we do a RAM preview. I'm sure you don't want to, you know, watch me do that. So just a second. All right. And after a quick RAM preview, you can see here's the effect we got. Not what we're looking for. You've got all these things changing. And there's a good reason for that. I neglected to change the layer sampling from current time till particle birth time. And that's basically it's sampling the ribbon that we made and changing the particles based upon where they were emitted and what that looks like at the current time so you get the streaking. Sometimes it's a good thing uh, in this case it's not what we're looking for so let's go ahead and change the current time to particle birth time and you'll notice that you're just gonna get patches of blue water instead of you know streaks of blue water so let's pause do another quick ram preview and see the difference alright after a quick ram preview here's what we got looks a little bit better. Now this is probably still a little too dark of a blue so just go back into your waterfall source and change this from being so dark to maybe being a hair lighter and we'll come back here in the final comp and I'll scroll over so we get a, a better look and I apologize about the rendering time on this. I'm doing this on my laptop. So you can see it looks a little better. It's not quite as dark blue. You can change those settings to whatever looks good to you. Um, I think that looks pretty pretty okay. Um, you can see the waterfall is kind of coming up a little bit too tall to look like it's coming over the edge here. So the best way to clean that up really is to grab your waterfall source, uh, turn it on, and turn your or just grab it and drag it down. Now it's got to re-render all those particles so just bear with it. Now it looks a little bit better like it's kind of just coming over the edge so I'm happy with that. Final step is really to add a little bit of realism because while you can see through water when it's all foamy it gets kind of opaque and does cast shadows. Uh, we've got obviously light coming in here um, from this direction but we don't have any shadows and obviously there's shadows on the dam so let's take care of that. Select your particular layer and choose layer, um, layer styles and do a drop shadow. So now you can see you've got a little bit of a drop shadow here. Let's monkey around with those settings just a hair and twirl that down and let's see I think we need to make it just a hair bigger or off the uh, wall here or off you know, casting down the wall a little bit better so bring up the size maybe oh, too much and let's just give us some more room to look here 120 Let's pull the angle a little further and drop the distance and the spread down. Just to where you think it looks good. So you can play with all those settings and you know get the shadow being cast where you want it to. Um, I don't like it being cast up here. A 
one of the ways that you can adjust this a little easier is if you increase the distance a lot you can then see where the camera or where the light is throwing your shadow. Um, obviously I don't want it that far off but that gives you a little bit better idea of where the light is pointing. And then you can adjust your size. The size basically blurs it out or makes it sharper. I want it to be a little bit sharper. And then what I can do is adjust my distance back down and I don't think I need it that opaque because this is kind of a blue color and it's not that you know not that dark so I can simply take this you know turn it into kind of a darker blue color which might look a little bit better or you know if you really wanted to you can just sample this <laughs> that's the easy cheap way to do it um, and uh, pretty much there you go I mean you can mask stuff out and make this look even better but um, you know play around with it and see what you what you come up with but that's how I created the uh, waterfall example um, that some of you have downloaded and hopefully this will help you in your projects understand a little bit more about um, particular especially the layer emitters and uh, I hope this uh, works for your project so until next time this is Michael Park for creativecow.net